So to get an idea of what the Exposing Grief program will really be about and entail, let's hear from Kimberly Johnson to see what she has to say after taking the first four events. How is, how is this whole program different than counseling? It's better than counseling. I kind of want my money back from them. <laughs> In what sense? I, you know, I've gone for six years and I feel like I just go there and then I talk and then she says, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she'll say a couple of things. But last time I said to her, I'm taking notes because obviously I'm not learning anything. I'm not listening. I'm still the same person. What am I doing wrong? You know, and this was actually more informative than that even was. So I just feel like I don't, I hate saying it. I don't want to go back to her because I learned more in your courses. Yeah, I guess that's where I'm not really sure how to how to help people understand the difference between what we're doing, what counseling is, is we're we're digging deep to understand the process mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, individualize it to you. Yep. Now, if you would have had all this. When you go to counseling, if you have all this information, would that have helped? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. Because you would, go in, you would go in with your feelings, just knowing exactly what you're feeling in that minute. You know, sometimes you feel um, shock. Sometimes you feel sad. You know, mm. sometimes you feel like you're you're bartering, you know. And it, even then, I just never went in to say, this is how I feel. I just kept saying, I'm going, you know, I'm not eating, uh, I'm okay. not sleeping. And, you know, really the emotion part of it helped me to say, this is exactly what you're feeling. And then that wheel that you had where you try to deflect it and say, yeah. okay, what's the opposite of this? Yeah. That I follow every day. Every, oh, do you? Yeah, I printed that out and I have it every day. And I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do. And it's amazing how you, it's almost like you're pulling yourself out of a hole. That's yes. how I always think of it. Like if you dropped in this hole and someone threw a rope and you're just, you know, pulling yourself out, that's how I imagine it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's good to picture it like that. Yeah. That, that would always, really help you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, um. In the first event, what did you discover about the many kinds of grief? Interesting. It really was. Um, you don't realize the different things that you experienced in life, even even how you were saying loss of a job or, you know, different things like that. You, yeah, I've experienced a ton of it. Every time you move, there's a potential mm -hmm. for grief. Every, every time there's a job change, uh, every friend that, that you know, yeah. you no longer connect with. Or some oh, yeah. friend moves away, things like that. Yep, any change. And you don't realize you don't process that sometimes. You really don't. You just keep going with your life or do something else. And it's amazing. And then also the other thing that I found really interesting too is the car accident one. How you were saying, would you be expected to go to work the next day Yeah. when you had a car accident? And I'm thinking, yeah. God, that, that was... You know, that happened to me in my life where I was forced to go to work. I'll never forget it. I had to actually do a trade show and show up <laughs> like literally two days after I found out that my husband was cheating and I was like, oh my God. I, and I, it was like, your body's there, but your head is not, right. you're not functioning, you know? Yeah, you're not functioning at all. And it, mm -hmm. it is so devastating to think that, you know, you've been through this trauma or this traumatic type event. And you're just expected to just soldier on. Yeah. Yeah. So the second event was all about the emotions. Um, what value, and I guess we've talked about that a little bit. You found lots of value in learning how to identify individual emotions. Oh, yeah. Is that fair? That wheel, that wheel that had so many. Yeah. I didn't realize all those you're experiencing. Like, I could have needed like 50 of those. It was crazy. Yes. And it's important to kind of go to each one and, and identify it and go, yes, that's what I'm feeling. And, and how can I move through this? Or do I need to be feeling this? We have to justify it. But yeah, last week's was the impact of grief. Did you notice any patterns that you had that were impacting uh, that you, you didn't realize the impact oh, yeah. it was having on you? Oh, yeah. The, the serial dating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I felt like that was just for me. Um, yeah, it was that, the not eating, the not sleeping. Um, it was really, you know, interesting, like all the different ways that it does affect you, like the impact of it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Now, what about in other people? Let's say an ex. Can you recognize that they may have some unhealed grief that they're not oh. dealing with? 
thousand percent. Um, yeah. That's now a huge red flag for me too, because even when I'm dating someone new, if they are recently separated, divorced, I'm like, you need to deal with that before you talk to me, because my growth is so, you know, surpassed this that I can't go through this with you. So it's funny, yeah. but no one realizes it when you're going through it. You know, you think you're no. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have the first four events, I guess, now change your perspective of grief overall? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, I didn't and, realize how how much I had and how many different ways that I was going through the experience. You know, I mean, I think it was just something you would just cry about, right? And then it's just amazing all these things that were happening to you, you know, even going to every single person that will hear you and talking about it like a broken record. It's amazing. I feel like the next time something does happen to me, um, even like after all the flip books that we have and all of the emotions and things like that, I think it's going to help me in the future because mm -hmm. we're always going to experience that. Life mm -hmm. is just life. Mm -hmm. You're always going to have loss. I mean, I've got three cats. All three are going to die someday, yeah. one sooner than the other. You know, my parents are getting older. I don't know what my relationships hold or could be move, move. I might be moving to Florida. So mm -hmm. a lot of this is helpful going forward, knowing I've got tools now to deal with this, you know, yeah. which is I never had before. And it's just, I had a huge communication problem and that I learned, I was like, wow, like even just the breathing, like even just that <laughs> before you respond is like amazing. Oh, a ton of people could use this. Um, I've actually been advocating for you, so you might see a lot of new people. <laughs> I'm pretty social, so I mean, I'm always telling people, oh my God, you have to do this course. You have to do it. I'm like, it's amazing. So, oh, it's crazy because I was just watching The Bachelor the other night and this this girl came out and told him right away about all of her daddy issues that she had. And I'm like, oh my God, this girl needs to take this course. <laughs> and it's just, it's amazing how you recognize it, yeah. you know, right away. For me, actually, it's funny, but I, I laugh because I start to become people's therapist or coaches. Like even last night, I went out with my girlfriend and she wasn't processing some things. And I was like, oh, I learned this. Let me tell you what I learned. And then we started talking about it. So it is. It helps other people. It does create deeper conversations, doesn't it? Very quickly mm -hmm. with awareness. Mm -hmm. And that is the fun part of this yep. is to have those deeper conversations. Yep. The drama okay. course I wanted to take. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's a phenomenal uh, yeah. program, that one, because it, it once again, it's you don't know what you don't know. And once you know it, it will completely change how you deal and interact with somebody at a conflict level. Mm -hmm. And the goal is not so many places call it. I want conflict resolution. That's what the term is all the time. And I don't really like that term. I would rather have conflict prevention. Like yeah. we, we should never have to reach conflict. Let's have conversation. Let's have, you know, let, let's figure our way through this rather than getting it to conflict. So that's my take on it is more conflict yeah, it's, prevention. It's interesting, but just by taking your courses, it had me look back into my past and I'm going, where the heck did I learn all of this drama, like the fighting? And why do I think this is normal? It was my first boyfriend, completely oh, okay. dramatic, just throwing things on the lawn. I mean, we were had detention together, breaking up, getting back in school and throwing things at each other and kicking the lockers. I mean, it was insane. And then I was like, wow, that was my first like relationship that I had. And it was going on for two years. We actually got into a really bad car accident together and it was that bad. He had two broken ribs, a punctured lung. And finally, our parents were like, you're done. Like, this is so toxic. I never experienced anything like it. That was actually trauma. And I don't even know if I grieved that or not because it's such a long time ago. But that was like, wow, I, I couldn't remember where I learned this stuff from. Every relationship after that was like this, except for my ex-husband. We didn't fight at all because when I started to do the dramatic, he sat me down like a normal person and was like, are you all right today? And I remember I just sat there and I was like, yeah, like, why am I doing this? You didn't do anything to me. This is so stupid. And then you just, you know, hug me. He's like, all right, I love you. I'm going, you know, to do whatever. And that was it. There was zero fighting, but I was bored. I was yeah. so bored. That's, that's what happens. It's called, yeah. it's called, it's called drama addiction. Yeah. So for all those years, I remember just saying to myself, oh my God, I'm so bored. I'm bored. I can't stand it. And now 
I did meet a really nice guy. Well, he seems really nice. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I could do this because he's not a challenge. <laughs> he does everything right. He's just a really nice guy. And everyone's like, just give him a chance. And I'm like, oh, I'm not used to this. <laughs> like, there's no tension. There's no nothing. Like, he just does everything right. So now I'm like, wow, like, I don't want to bring any drama to this relationship and see how it goes. So I wanted to take that course so I could fix it and not bring this. Well, I would really see once again, there's, there's, it's not the communication one, I think would be life changing. Yeah. Because once again, people don't understand how how to communicate and what it means. What, What does vulnerability mean? And we have to get rid of that drama addiction, which is in that the stop yeah. the drama one is you have to realize where it comes from and, and what is actually going on is you're equating love with drama, yeah. right? Yeah, That's passion what you started and drama, And yeah. it's not healthy. No, it's, it's not. not. And I didn't realize any of that. And I did bring that to my therapist and she said, wow, that's, that's really interesting. She's like, now you, you pinpointed it where it started. And she's like, that's 20 years. 20 years that you've been doing this. And I'm like, I know. And I'm like, you know, that's where, okay, fine. We had this horrible breakup, but God, if I didn't have that breakup, I wouldn't be here right now growing this much. So that was like meant to happen. I feel like, so that now I've got all this growth and the next relationship that I get into, it's going to be completely different. So no, I actually did apologize. One of my ex-boyfriends from right after my divorce and we were talking a little bit and I was like, listen, you know, um, he was laughing because he said, oh, somebody told me I lost an opportunity with you. And I said, listen, you really didn't because I'm so different than I was when I met you. And I just want to apologize, you know, for all the fighting and the drama that I brought you. And I just I assume that you should be doing these things. And I was making you almost, you know, like you should read my mind. And you should know what I'm feeling. I never came out and said, I'm feeling this because of this or had a nice sit down conversation. It was always flying off the handle fights. And he's like, yeah, he's like, but I always knew you were such a good person. He goes, yeah, but we fought like crazy. And he's like, I can't believe you're actually saying this right now. And I was like, no, I really apologize to you because that, you know, not saying I want you back. (laughs) You could be my friend. But um, yeah, it's amazing how much you learn. That was only from your courses. That's only been the last three, yeah, nine weeks. Yeah. So, well, okay. So how, what makes you decide you wouldn't want him back? Like what's the, because you know him differently now or you see him differently? Well, I'll put it to you this way. He has a girlfriend, but yet he's always in my inbox. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not really face so guy. Do you attract that type of person? Mm-hmm. Yep. Wouldn't it be nice to understand how to stop that? Yeah, that would be amazing. To stop it. But so, but the do you know the reason you attract that type of person? I don't, but it's interesting because out of my 14 dates of my serial dating that I've had, the one that I was most attracted to was this famous DJ. Yeah. And there's no way that that guy is ever going to look for a relationship. He's surrounded by beautiful women everywhere he goes. And I laughed because he like, I haven't talked to him in three weeks. And he's like, Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was in shock, but that actually was like, cause I'm not doing anything. And I was like, Oh, maybe I'll see him. And I was excited. I'm like, why are you excited to see this guy? He didn't talk to you in three weeks. I think they called it bread bread breadcrumbing, I guess. is the term. Yeah. I guess that'd be a term that people use nowadays. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's funny, but. I don't know why that challenge to me is always like, in you know, like, oh, wow, I like this guy, you know? And that's your approach every time is that to go on a date, does that mean that you're already starting down the relationship path, just being on a date? That was one thing my therapist brought up. Just go on a date and get yes. to know someone and stop it. And then what I also learned about myself recently too was, the fact that you're when you're in your 20s and you look at someone and you look for looks first, that's what you do when you're younger. You're all about the looks, right? Mm-hmm. It's, this one's so beautiful. This one's so handsome. And you don't really care about their other values or what they're actually looking for in life. And in your 40s, it's all different. But somehow, because I look younger for my age, I'm not there. And I'm still looking for this like handsome guy. And there's not many that like 
I find attractive in their 40s or 50s in their anymore. 40s, 50s, yeah. Yeah, like to me, I'm like, wow, they look like my dad. And that's why I'm going for these guys that are too young, but their mental capacity is not what mine is. It's so different what we're looking for, like core mm-hmm. values, mm-hmm. right? It's different. So I'm trying to look beyond that. And now when looking beyond that, it's so hard because there's so many people online and people don't really write things that really mean anything. You know, it's it's hard to look past. Yeah. So it's, that's it's, my well, it's hard. It's hard to discover the right person if you don't present yourself as the right person. And I yeah. think that's part of the problem. You I'm to... trying. It's funny. We my my friends keep calling this a hot girl summer. I don't know what that means, but they're like, you need to have a hot girl summer. Do not get in a relationship. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah. 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 And I'm just like, I'm not, I'm trying so hard, but I can see I'm being pushed already you know someone always wants to claim me and i'm like oh here we go (laughs) so do you think you'll be able to stop yourself um i don't this is this is me being me i always don't want to hurt someone else's feelings it's never about me it's always about them and that's what happens you feel so they show interest then you're going to feel guilty if you don't show interest is that what you mean yes Exactly. Or if, you know, you don't want them to think you're not a good person and say that I want to keep my options open, you know, or hurt their feelings. And they're going to think, oh, my God, I'm not good enough. You know, you don't want to be with me. What's wrong with me? You know, so I'm always that person, the empathic person (laughs) that thinks of them before I think of myself. And how's that? How's that been working out for you? (laughs) So how long was that relationship? I was married um, eight years. We were together for 12. Okay. Yeah. So that was all good. So before that was kind of dramatic and after that's been dramatic. Yeah. It and how long dramatic. after your marriage, after the that ended, you only took very minimal time? Oh, I didn't even take time. Once we were in separate bedrooms, I was already dating someone else. Um, I knew somebody from college. So it wasn't like a brand new person. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't serial date. <laughs> I just... Yeah. You just attached right away. Attached right away. Um, Yeah, we went on vacations together, but it was a lot of fighting. And it was hard because you know why? I didn't give myself a chance to detach from that relationship. And I expected him to be like my husband. You're trying to slot somebody into the same spot. Yeah. And he wasn't the same. You know, he did things that like, I was like, what's wrong with you? Why do you? What is, you know, what a good, this isn't a good person, you know, but he just did things differently, you know, and you have to learn everyone's different. So that was my problem because I, when you're married that long and you're in a relationship, you expect everyone that, you know, to act like that. Would be the same. Yes. Yeah. I had to accept him for who he was and I didn't. And then again, being away from it, even just now, when I look back, that's why I said that was where the apology just came from, because I was like, wow, you know, it made me think about all these relationships, just like thinking about the grieving. Like, did I grieve that? Did I grieve that? Even him, I think maybe I got in a relationship again a month after we broke up. So I met someone else and was with him for 10 months. And then when we broke up, two weeks is all it took. And I was with somebody else in a relationship. So, like, so, so that goes back to that question we asked earlier about, do you know who you are? And you don't, no, you don't no, really I have totally, a real good idea of who you are. Yeah. My whole life. I mean, this is where my cousin keeps saying to me, you have to find a hobby. And I said, but I do have a hobby. I do yoga. I, you know, I go to the gym. He's like, do you realize you used to paint watercolors? He goes, why don't you just bring out your watercolors and start to paint and Just do something that you really enjoy doing that, you know, nobody else can take away from you. You used to do this. He's like, and you might get good at it again and start selling paintings. And I'm like, oh my God, it's been like 25 years since I picked up a paintbrush, you know? So it is really working on figuring out who I am and what I need to do. And I'm afraid, part of me is afraid to move forward to go to Florida because it is me running from the situation here saying, I just got to get away from everybody because there's triggers and I didn't realize the dumbest triggers that there are we were just talking about it yesterday and I'm like oh my god like we were just driving past um the one road coming home from the vet and I'm like I cut through and I'm like oh there's my old house with my ex-husband and you don't realize it you know these different you know triggers that happen to you but yeah moving forward even to Florida I was like I just don't want to be a caretaker again and that's where my parents live 
part of it, yes, I want to be there for them, but I don't want that to be my soul. Like that's what my purpose is. Cause that's, what's going to happen again. Once they're gone, I'm not going to know who I am again. So, exactly. mm-hmm. so these are and things that, that taking the course has made me really say, okay, you really have a lot to think about here. Yeah. And I'll be in more courses. I, I think Sunday, if I'm home, I definitely want to take, um, what was the one course that you were doing? Um, personality styles, right? Yeah. Personalities this, this Sunday. Yeah. That's the, yep. the event. Yeah. But yeah, if you're home, do that one. And then once yeah, again, your, your courses have helped me. I mean, thank you so much. So many things. It's crazy. Like, you know, I can't believe people that I've apologized to it's coming out. <laughs> it's like, right. And they're just like, where is this coming from? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just starting to realize some things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no. yeah. And I really That's think you'd benefit. I really think you'd benefit from the communication one for sure. Yeah. Because most people do. I'm in the middle of that one right now. And and most people are just in shock at what they didn't realize. Like I had, we were doing the vulnerability one and, and somebody had dragged her, her husband there. I'm not dragged, but he wanted to come out too. But most people come out thinking that, oh, I'm the good communicator and my partner's not. And you, you know, you do the event and, and the one person just said, I'm not as vulnerable as I thought I was. Mm-hmm. Not, once you understand what vulnerable re, vulnerability really is, you start yeah. to recognize what you're not doing. And no wonder we're not communicating very well. Oh, yeah. So. I think your courses probably save a lot of marriages and relationships if people actually took them. I think they would if people would take them. Yeah. But they mm-hmm. have to be willing to put in the time and effort. That's all. Yep. hundred percent. Anyway. Okay, Kim, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Have and a good week. We'll see you again. You too. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye. As we just heard from Kimberly, grief is a complex mix of emotions and feelings and ups and downs and a roller coaster of, of emotions. My name is Bruce Doherty, and I'm the founder of A Conscious Partner. I'll be your host as we explore all of the unhealed grief and pain and trauma and baggage that you're carrying around that you maybe don't need to be carrying around. We're going to do our best to make it interesting and fun. It's going to hurt at times. It's going to feel good at times. There's going to be a roller coaster, as I mentioned, but we'll manage it. We'll get through it. And we're going to show you ways that you can deal with it and give you actual processes to follow along the way. Come on out. It's powerful. It's effective. It's affordable. It's interactive. And the whole goal is to heal some pain. Thank you.